What's going on you guys? Pep Latibus here and it's time to wrap up Avatar Month with my review of The Legend of Korra Book 4 Balance. Avatar Month in celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Avatar The Last Airbender franchise. As per usual with my Korra reviews and my full series reviews in general, I'm going to give a brief synopsis of the basic setup of the season, I'm going to talk about the characters and how they've developed, and then I'm going to talk about the pros and cons and call it a review. So let's get into it. Okay, so the setup for this season is actually very interesting. It takes place three years after the third season ended. We saw that Korra was wheelchair bound and still recovering over the poison that Zaheer had put in her. And she was very sad and very defeated, and that carries over into this season three years later because she was in that wheelchair for an extremely long amount of time, unable to walk, completely helpless, and unable to be the Avatar, which is kind of just the whole dynamic of her character, and I'll get into that in the character development category, but that's basically her portion of it is being wheelchair bound and you know, two and a half years later she tries to rediscover herself and she meets up with certain people who I will get into in the character section and she kind of has to rediscover herself as well as stop the plot of a metal bending cunt from hell, Kuvira, who's wanting to conquer the Earth Kingdom. Along the way, Bolin and Varric have their little uh, escapades that they're going on as they try to get to somebody to warn them about what Kuvira is doing and we also have uh, Mako's storyline where he has to escort around this stupid prince character and then we also have Asami's storyline where she kind of tries to um, go back to her father who's in prison and talk to him and maybe you know rekindle their family relationship and everything and that's basically what all four of the main characters are doing throughout this season and that's all of their separate storylines and all of it is trying to thwart Kuvira the evil bitch who wants to conquer the entire Earth Kingdom. So that's the setup. Okay, so for the characters, Asami goes through some pretty good characterization in this season. I won't say full-blown character development, but kind of. She forgives her father and reunites with him and tries to patch things up, and it's very well done. Their scenes together are nice. I guess I can touch on her dad as well since I'm talking about her. He wants to forget everything. He doesn't want to be an equalist anymore. He wants to just get her forgiveness and be a family again. So we see character development from him as well, and he's able to redeem himself in the end. It's very, very good. Touching scene when he dies sacrificing himself. It's, it's very nice. And Asami's character also goes through other character development changes with Korra. I'll go into those later, though. Now I guess I'll move on to Mako. And Mako doesn't really change too much. He has some ideological disputes with Bolin over whose side that they should be taking in this whole, not war, but this rebalancing of the Earth Kingdom, and other than that, he's basically the same. He has a dumb haircut three years later. That's all else I really have to say about Mako, just kind of more of the same. Bolin, he joins Kuvira's army to help reunite the Earth Kingdom. He wants to use his earth bending and his lava bending to help people, and this is the best way he saw that he could do it, going around the Earth Kingdom and bringing food and everything. But Kuvira is not exactly the nicest lady, and this kind of causes friction with his girlfriend Opal. So he's trying to win her over and everything, and that's kind of his characterization. He also gets serious in this season, which is very, very good. He actually realizes he fucked up by working with Kuvira, and he wants to fix it, and he's with Varric. And he's like, Varric, we gotta go, we gotta do this, I fucked up. And it's really cool to actually see him buckle down and get serious when he usually is all jokes and never takes anything seriously. Or even if he's taking it seriously, he's still cracking jokes and he's still a comedic relief character. So that was very nice to see. Next we have Korra. And her character development is obviously the main focal point of this season. Her rediscovering herself and meeting up with a certain someone I'll mention in a second. Um, and, you know, basically the idea is she's scared to get into these dangerous situations again where she almost dies, and she wants to kind of keep herself away from that, and it's kind of a subconscious thing, and she has to overcome it, as well as try to find, you know, maybe non-violent solutions to Kuvira's invasion, quote-unquote. And it's just interesting character development for her. She has to face past demons and move forward as a character, and it's very good, because... Her entire dynamic of the series is, I want to be the Avatar, I want to help people, I am the Avatar, you gotta deal with it, all that stuff. And when she's unable to fight, and when she's lost a step, and she's getting her ass kicked by just fodder, earth-bending woman, earth -bending woman from a tournament and shit like that, this MMA-style thing with earth-bending, 
you know, it's like, yeah, you've definitely lost a step when you're getting your ass kicked like this, and she's not even admitting that she's the Avatar anymore, and she's gone out totally off the radar. It's just very interesting, the directions her character goes, and it's good character development overall. Though next we have the side characters, Tenzin, not really too much to say, he and the other Earth, or not Earthbenders, he and the other Airbenders are kind of being, not police, but just kind of helpers around the Earth Kingdom, kind of separate from Kuvira's thing, going around and using their airbending to stop fucking bandits and everything. It's very cool, but they're stretched thin. That's not really a Tenzin thing, but as I said, Tenzin doesn't really go through too much from what I remember. There could be some amazing Tenzin moment in this season that I'm completely forgetting. I probably am, but Tenzin, he's mostly the same from what I remember. We also have Lin is back, and Lin Beifong, of course, and she is m m b b mostly the same. Uh, I was going to say, she does meet up with a certain someone and kind of talk about some family stuff, but overall it's not too much. Um, we also have Prince Wu, who is just a lame character. He's a gag character, he's a prince, he's spoiled, he's weak, he's pathetic, he makes a bunch of jokes. He admits that he's pathetic. He's okay at best, honestly. He's not that great. He knows how to talk to people. He has some redeeming moments, but I don't really care for him too much at all. Now for the side character that you've all wanted me to talk about. Grandma Toph. Oh goodness, she is amazing. The voice actress knocks it out of the park playing this character. She plays the character exactly like the previous voice actress who played her in the original series. It's a perfect performance. She's funny, she's sarcastic, she has her childish personality, which she's allowed to have now that she's an old woman and doesn't have to deal with her kids anymore. She's just chilling in the swamp. She's basically the Yoda to Korra's Luke while they're in the Dagobah swamp. That's really what it feels like. And yeah, she's just giving her advice and helping her fight her past demons. She's like, yeah, I'll take the rest of the metal out of you, but you gotta let me do it. And Korra goes through more development there with Toph, but it's just great to see Toph back. She doesn't do a whole ton in this season, but just seeing her old and still awesome and still able to kick Korra's ass, she's like, you're the worst Avatar ever, and it's just like, perfect. That's exactly Toph awesome, fantastic. And that's really it for the side characters, so I guess I'll move into the villain, Kuvira. She's a cool character. Um, I like her personality, I like her dominant attitude that she has. Um, she's very balanced, I guess is what I want to say, and that's also the name of the season, ironically, or coincidentally, probably ironically. She's wanting to rebalance the sea, the sea, blah, blah, blah. she wants to rebalance the kingdom, that's what I meant to say, but she's going about it in all the wrong ways, and she's going about it in a very unbalanced way, so I think that's very interesting. She's very Nazi, communist style, like, yeah, we'll uh, bring you food and everything, and just put the Kuvira flags, and we'll bring in our mech tanks, and oh, did I say mech tanks? Here's the food, and we'll keep the bandits out of here. And, uh, yeah, so it's a little bit shady, you know, but still a cool character, definitely a psycho, definitely not right in the head, but she's cool. I kind of don't like how she came out of nowhere, <laughs> like, uh, the Equalist thing made a lot of sense. The Unalak stuff wasn't really out of nowhere because it was her family and there was like history and backstory and kind of the same thing with Zaheer and the Red Lotus. They have a history with the Avatar and their plans. Kavir kind of came out of nowhere. She appears at the end of Season 3 or around the end of Season 3 as just some random metal bender in the army of the Metal City and now she's got the rank of being able to just reconquer everything and she's it just it kind of comes out of nowhere. Weird to be the final villain but she works as an adversary for Korra. She's kind of like an anti-Korra. So that really works. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Varric's here as well, and he gets married to Julie, and they have some development there, but it's not a whole ton. So I guess I'll talk about the pros and cons. Okay, so for the pros and cons, jumping ahead three years I think was a bold move that actually worked out because it really shows the severity of what happened to Korra, and it shows the time she spent being helpless and the time she spent being weakened by the poison and everything. It was just very good to show all of that. It didn't get fixed in like a month. It didn't get fixed in a few weeks. She had to deal with this for a long time and it further pushes her character. It also allows for other things to happen like, you know, everything's been fucked up for a long time and they've been trying to rebuild. Kuvir has got almost all of the Earth Kingdom. You know, it sets everything up very nicely transitioning from the previous season to this season. So that's a pro. Um, another pro is obviously Bolin getting serious. I think that's very good for his character. 
His lava bending is still badass, so that's a pro. Uh, Asami's dad, great, bringing that back. Uh, Kuvira as a villain. All the action is pretty damn good in this season. Uh, the animation, I won't call it a con, but the animation does get budget cut in this season, so there is definitely some moments of animation that are a tad bit shoddy, but overall it still looks quite good. It is substandard by Avatar standards, though, but I don't, I wouldn't say, I'd say still slightly better than what happened in the beginning of Season 2. Slightly better, just from an artwork standpoint. But yeah, they did get budget cuts, so that's a shame. But yeah, all the action's great. Even the finale is really cool. The giant mech Jaeger robot Pacific Rim thing. Almost too overblown for Avatar. Almost. But it just, because it is a machine and it is being controlled by bending and everything, I do give it a slight pass, but it's almost a bit too overblown with the huge gun arm and everything. So, yeah, that was almost too much, but not quite season two levels of too overblown. So that was cool. Uh, what else is a pro in this season? Seeing Zaheer again, he's awesome. Uh, when Korra goes to visit him, and she's like, hey, you know, you wanted to bring balance or whatever to the world, and now there's this great disaster because of you. And you can see the look on Zaheer's face. He's like, yeah, I fucked up. This is not what I intended. And that's what I love about his character, is that he is not evil. He is not a horrible, horrible person. It's just that what he sees as peaceful and what he sees as balanced is wrong. It's just not the way it needs to be done. It just causes too much trouble. And that's what ends up happening, and it's not what he intended. And that's just... I love his character so much. So he has his talk with Korra, and that's very good. What else is good in this season? Um, it's not that there's not a lot of good things. It's just that I kind of already touched on them, because it's a very simple season, you know what I mean? Each character goes through their little storylines, but not a ton happens, you know, besides that, so, yeah, that's really all I have to say about positives. Negatives, yeah, the animation's shoddy here and there, not bad, but just substandard for uh, Avatar, you know, standards, but, you know, what can you do? They got budget-cutted, it's budget-cutted, that's not a word, they got a budget cut, there we go. Um, yeah, like I said, Kuvira's kind of an out-of-nowhere villain, uh, weird to be the final villain, but not horrible. Uh, there was a little bit of a lacking of development with Asami and Korra in terms of having a relationship. Obviously, they can't go full on with it because it's Nickelodeon, but there is a bit lacking there. But I suppose you could say they started their relationship at the end. They weren't really in love. They were kind of starting something by the end of the season. So by that, you know, that's fair. You can say that, you know, things that happened throughout the season kind of pointed to that. Prince Wu is kind of a con. Um, he's just not interesting. He's got some funny jokes, but overall, he's not that great. The recap episode at, towards the end of the season, no. That, again, it shows signs of budget cut, because that recap episode, unlike the recap from the original Avatar with the Ember Island players, which was clever and made the recap fit into the story and was funny and they made fun of themselves, this was just your generic recap episode until Varric's side of the story at the end, which was fantastic and hilarious. But until then, it was just kind of a generic recap episode, and when you only have 13 episodes to go with, and you have a recap episode in there, it's kind of like, eh, because the last season of um, the original Avatar was 21 episodes long. That kind of works out. This season, however, has 13, just like the previous season, and one of them is wasted on a recap episode, so that's kind of a shame. But other than that, I really have nothing else to complain about. It's a really good season. It's not as good as season three, uh, not as strong in the villain category or the animation category, or I think just the overall setup and everything that happened, but Korra's character development was seriously great, and the stuff with Asami was great, and the final action sequences, fighting the giant kaiju, destroying Jaeger robot was really cool too. And, you know, Korra and Kuvira's final talk in the spirit world, I believe they were in. That was cool as well. And, of course, Varric's hilarious. Great to see more of him. Him getting married to Julie and their development and all that. That was cool. So, yeah, it was just a fun season. It was a good finale. It wasn't as good as season three. I do hope that Korra is able to continue in a comic book form. That would be great. Do what they're doing with uh, the Avatar comics. That would be a great way to continue the series. Because I do feel like this is a good... It's a 
good way to end it. It's okay, but since Chorus had such an episodic uh, tone to it with all of its villains being different, I think you could keep going and kind of find a way to give it a proper ending through a comic book medium. But this review's gone on long enough, so I'll just wrap it up here. I'm going to give this season of The Legend of Korra an 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was a very good season of the series, and it's a pretty good way to end it, but I do hope it does continue in some form in the future. So, thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you guys think of the fourth season of The Legend of Korra in the comments section below. Follow me on Instagram, that would be awesome. Tell me what you guys thought of Avatar Month. It didn't get a lot of views, I didn't expect it to. I just kind of did it because I love the series and it was just kind of a fun idea. And it happened to be the 10th year of the series' existence. So, yes, as I said, tell me what you guys think of all that stuff. Follow me on Instagram, that would be great. Rate this video, give it a thumbs up, that would be awesome as well. Subscribe if you like what you've seen here and if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.